Right, that first coat's dry, so I'm going to give these a wee light rub down with some of this fine steel wool. Now, you're better with the fine stuff. You get three different grades, fine, medium and coarse, self-explanatory. I find the fine one is better. Great stuff. If you're wondering what that is in my hand, uh, word to the wise, see if you're going to use wood dye. Uh, make sure the lid on your bottle isn't split before you shake it. So it's going to take a couple of days to get off. But all that aside, going with the grain, steel wheel, just lightly rub. Don't rub that way, like rub that, that, and that, if you know what I mean. You're coming off the surface into the grooves. And then the other way. <coughs> this will sharp this will smooth off the sharp edges on the flutes as well. Turn around. Bring the stem. Just make sure when you're doing things like this you support the body so it doesn't split the balsa. Because it is as you know quite soft. Rub and make sure I'm getting right into the flute. Going one way at the one time. Don't go like both ways because you will tear the grain. It's pretty smooth. So let's do the three of them. more care taken at this point, or at this stage, will make for a better end result. That's with everything in life. Preparation is key. So. <laughs> and just be careful with this stuff as well, with the buyer wheel. The steel wheel, as you may call it. Makes quite a bit of mess. I don't know if you can make it out down here. So breaks off in wee tiny bits while we are using it so be very careful and mindful of the mess and also can be sharp I've got quite tough hands being a joiner I've been working away for 30 years or so my hands have kind of toughened up over the years if for you know, whatever reason if you've got softer hands you know if you're working in an office and you're not doing a lot of manual labour as I am your hands might be softer. It's not a dig, I'm just an observation. Maybe wear a pair of gloves, a pair of the you know the latex, the blue or whatever latex gloves. Maybe wear something like that. That might help you. So that's A3 rubbed down. What I'm gonna do before I start putting the next coat of sealer on, let me get that together. Can you see that? That's just what's come off of the three floats. Quite a bit, isn't it? So, being the tidy person I am, on the floor. <laughs> right, next coat. Let's give that a wee rumble. Again, into all the grooves. Need to fold the paper over a wee bit just to get in. Obviously it's a wee bit more straightforward with a, a normal shaped float body, but in there. Don't worry if you get it in your fingers, it washes off pretty easy. really stick in that foam pad. Uh, we're going to rub it down anyway if there is a, a wee bit of sticking. It's getting cold out here. The fire's running out. 
just don't fire up again. Do. Sorry. Okay, we're going to dye this body, or as you know, any body. I would hold off for the sealer until you've dyed it. Again, personal preference and experimentation. Sometimes sealing it and then putting a dye on it gives you a different effect. Just another wee thing to try. Yeah, that's two coats on them. So, again, let that dry up and we'll give it a rub down and a third coat. Right, I've taken the liberty of giving it another coat and another rub down uh, while we were off the of camera there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the stem, the bottom stem, a dark colour. So these are the colours I tend to use for small work like this. You don't need big massive tubs of paint. So this is one I like. There are a lot of cracking colours in this for, for us using or making traditional style floats. Uh, Revel Aqua Colour Water based acrylic paint Very easy to use Two coats usually suffices Washes off in water No mess All that jazz Missy's doesn't complain about the smell This one I'm going to use today is Black Green As you can see that Now for those of you may be familiar with the old Harcourt floats This is about as close as you'll get To the stem colour At the bottom of the old Harcourt floats uh, cracking colour, great pigmentation, great wee lid, comes off, clips on there, it makes it stand up, right, it's a great wee thing isn't it, so what we're going to do, small brush, uh, want to paint the brush up, and basically just apply to the recently sealed and rub down stem. So just making sure you finish at the shoulder. Do that. I'm gonna actually try something. For a wee effect on this one. These things just come to you. I don't know if you can see that. But basically, the green has went into the green. That's the plan. Who's that going to show up? The green went into the green and it's also stained the stem slightly. That's the wee thing you can do. Just put another wee bit on. Rather than a solid colour. Very carefully. There's that. Not a solid colour, and that comes up. Sorry, paintbrush in my mouth. That comes up lovely once it's lacquered. So I'm going to do that with three of them. Take these wee things that just come to you when you're, when you're mid paint. So, just apply liberally. Sometimes when I'm making floats, I don't go in with any distinct idea of what I'm going to do. It just kind of develops as you go on. And then other times you go in, you know exactly what you're going to do. The effect. One, two, and have a bit of paper. Now, if you hadn't sealed the stem, you wouldn't really be able to do that because, with it being sealed, 
effectively the paint at this moment in time is just sitting on top of it now if you had left that bare it would soak right in and these are the wee things you couldn't do but again it's all experimentation try it if you want, we want to do it on a float do it on just a bit of wood for a wee second and then gently take it off again there you go this is a nice wee green but not solid colour so I'll let that dry that usually takes about 25 minutes so I'll let that dry again look can't tell you enough Lid back on the paint. There you go. So, three of them are done just now. I will let that dry. No more paint on that. And then I'll paint the tips white first. Okay, see you in a bit. Hi, folks, back. And as you can see, I've moved inside because it's freezing outside. Uh, going to carry on with the painting and the whipping and whatever on the wee float that I've been making. So, without further ado, I'll point you down to the, the board I have in front of me and we'll get on with it. If I can balance you. Right, there we go. Right, what I've got here is the wee float that I started the other night. So I'm going to paint the, the tip white, I'm going to do a wee bit of whipping just on my shoulder here and then I've got another one that I made and we'll do the, the tip, do a wee bit of whipping, do the tip red on that and then I've got another one here and we'll do the black lines around the top. So I'll get on with a wee bit of whipping on the the shoulder here between the stem and the body. I'll bring that a wee bit closer up so you can maybe see what I'm doing. So I've covered whipping before in other videos but we'll go over it again. And I'm using Piper Silk uh, 80 by 3 Henna is the name of the, the colour of the thread I'm using. So quite a thick thread but looks apart once it's lacquered. Bring it around here. Oh, nearly dropped you right off the face of the planet. Yeah, that's better. Hopefully, you can see that. So, just a small bit of colour on the, the shoulder here. So, thread, tag end towards the top of the float. You can see that. Catch it in my hand. And I'm going to catch this just about an eighth of an inch below the shoulder. Catch it with my big crazy thumbnail. Bring it round. And then, hope you can see that. Overlap. That way. So I'm actually trapping the thread under itself. And then I'll continue just to turn that round the stem of the float. For a few turns. Right, I'm going to trap it like that. Using a wee knife. I'm going to trim off that tag. Get rid of that down there. And then I'll continue up onto the body. Now, as you approach the body, take a wee slight bit of tension off and it should just ride up onto the body. Like that. So you can see it. And it's just going up the body. 
leave it. I'll stop it there just now. Catch it with that finger. And I've got a wee draw thread here, just a heavier gauge thread. Looped. Set it up the body, trap it with my thumb, and bring the two open ends to the bottom of your whip. Then trap that under. And then one, two, three, four, five is plenty. Always holding the bot the whip of your thread with your finger behind. Scissors, you cut off. And I like to use a pair of tweezers because I've got thumbs like sausages. Catch the loop, get the end of your thread through the loop. Always maintaining the hold on the back of the thread. I catch it there, get the two ends of the draw thread, and just gently but firmly pull it through. I'm eating the cup, and I'll just straighten all that, make sure it's straight, it's not too bad. And then I'm going to get that up there, and then nice and flush. We nick. And that's a feature colour. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a wee tip, black tipping on the end, Piper Silk again. This is uh, 4 by 20 black. So, exact same procedure. Just trap it right up tight to the, the henna thread there. We wrap round. Couple of wraps to trap it. Don't want much, this is just a wee tiny highlight. So trim off the tag in nice and neat. Draw through it in again. And then one, two, three, four, five. Snap. Open up the loop and pass my tag in through it. Ends. Cool. Simple as that. And then nice and flush. So I'm going to do another wee bit at the bottom. Just with a wee bit of spiral whip on it, just for a bit of decoration. So, same again. It's always the same procedure. Just grab the end. Nice up tight to the hair and thread. What I'm going to do there is just tighten it up a wee bit. Just to close up any gaps. And I will trim off the tag, get rid of that. Now I'm not going to put the draw thread in this time because I'm going to do a wee spiral. So just holding the thread at a slight angle. It's probably about four or five turns. And bring it back into the 90 and form the ends for this. Three turns just now, I'll put the draw thread in. Drop it under and complete the whip. Like so. Same again. Snip. Open that up. And pop the tag in through it up. And then the two open ends and pull. And that is 
tighten that up a wee touch. There it goes like that. Oops, let me throw it away. And then trim that off. So that's a, a wee bit of decorate, decorative button on the bottom. Nothing too fancy, just a wee bit of colour. So what I'm going to do now is paint this tip white with the undercoat. So angled square edge brush. This is a tin I'm using just now, but any type of, I use a quick drying undercoat uh, so I can get things done. Uh, emulsion, anything along that line will do. So, we've got on the brush, not too much, that's plenty. Right, I'm only doing the very tip, I'm not going onto the, the body at all. So, nice and carefully. Down at the shoulder. Like that. Make sure we're not too bad. Well, that's it. Primed. That'll get another two coats on there. But what I'll do is I'll put it over on the the block just now. That'll do that. Put that brush in there, out of the way. And then I'm going to paint the tip of this one with the red. Just to show you. This has had three coats of the white, so red paint that I use. Artists Acrylic, Pound Shop, B&M, Hobbycraft, depends how much you want to spend, get it out of B&M, pound, pound fifty a tube, decant it into a jar out of the tube, keeps it a lot longer. Uh, another brush, that's a half inch brush, square edge, in fact it's a 3 8 brush, so just a small amount of paint onto the brush. Nice and simple. Do the tip first. Get a bit of paint on the a bit of paint on it. And I'm gonna leave a white band between the top of the body and the the stem, so using the square end of the brush. Nice smooth, deliberate stroke. This will take probably three coats as well. Just steadily turning and keeping an eye on the, the line. There we go. You can get that kind of effect. Okay. Put that in the block. And what I'll do is put the lid back on the paint because we don't want any accidents and I will stop that there just now. I'll go and clean these brushes and then I'll go on to the next bit. See you in a minute. Right, back again. Brushes are cleaned. So this is one, three floats, different stage this one. See it's got a wee shine on it because I give it a bit of a seal. I'll talk about that in a minute. So I've gave this three coats of the red, three coats of the white underneath it. Uh, we've got the whopping completed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wee black line on here, a wee black line on the white there, just the join of the red and the white, and then a black line right at the shoulder. Using 4x20 black thread, again, pipers. So, same procedure again. I'm going to hold it up there about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Bring it, trap it in my thumbnail, bring it round. And 
overlap. So, kill three turns, make sure it's on square. This is really just for decoration. It does help a bit with bite indication as well. If you've got a wee fine bite and that black line disappears. So, draw thread. Trap there. And then, trap with a whipping thread. One, two, three, four, five. Open up the loop, take in through, catch it, and then jump pull. We tighten up, make sure it's nice and even. There we go, and trim that off. We'll just quickly do the other two. Again, this one just gives you definition between the red and the white. Trim. And then. And. Last one, if I can find the end of the thread. Last one, down the bottom here. Give that a wee bit heavier there, or we'll just hide the, completely hide the joint between the body and the tip. That's fine like that. Through the draw thread. And then pull. but not least a wee trim so it's a tip all hooked up what I'll do now is just get a lacquer from here and a brush move it back a bit now again you all know a lot you know the lacquer that I use just decanted into a jar so I'll maybe try, if I can work out how to do it, put a link in the comment section below the, of the lacquer and the sand and sealer that I use. Uh, if any you can't get to a specialist paint supplier, then you can maybe buy it online from them. I know quite a few you have. So, simple as, I have the block sitting to my side, ready to receive the, the, the lacquer flow. Just turn it in a wee bit so you can see exactly how I go about it. Nothing fancy. Half inch brush, again, or three inch brush, sorry. It's a wee bit kind of hairy looking because I've been using it a lot for lacquer. But you can be quite liberal with the lacquer, the first coat certainly. Starting for the tip. 
Just want you right there. Towards the shoulder. I'll do another tip, so I'll do the body from the flipping up to the tip from here up. So I always do it in stages. I'll do one half of the float, then the next time I'm putting a coat on it, I'll do I'll do that half up that way. Next time I'll do it from there down and then alternate it. So it's getting even coats. But you can always get it in the pad to dry. Just even it all out, make sure it's nice and even. And then that's basically, that's about four coats I think that's had. So this is where we're aiming with the rest of them. So, once I've done that, basically that just goes in to the pad, the foam, with the other ones to dry. So I'll get these other ones up to a stage, get a bit of lacquer on them, and then I'll continue lacquering this one, and we'll see where we go for there. So, see you soon. Cheers.